How should you invest your first $1,000? Should you shove it all into the stock of a company that's been hit particularly hard by this most recent downturn, in the hopes of, you know, making a quick return when the eventual recovery comes? Should you take a look at something fairly speculative, like art, baseball cards, some commodities, or even many of the cryptocurrencies out there? Should you find a way to leverage it with the help of real estate or some other leverage investment? Or should you stay more conservative with a simple CD, money market fund, or a mix of various index funds? Well, you may disagree, but I think the answer to all of those questions is a resounding no. Because if we're talking about how to invest $1,000, your first $1,000, then I think there's an investment that'll almost certainly generate a far higher return over the long run than all of those other options combined. And that investment is, of course, an investment in yourself. Yes, I know it's a very cliche answer at this point, but it doesn't make it any less valid. If you're looking to invest your first $1,000, I think we can reasonably assume that you're still in the early stages of financial development. You may have read a book or two on the subject or talked things over with a friend or colleague. You may have watched a handful of videos or listened to some podcasts talking about money, but you're still probably relatively new to the field. And that means that there's still likely a lot of room for discovery and growth. With that in mind, today we're going to be going over some things that I would do with that $1,000 if I were just starting out on my own financial journey today. But before we get going, be sure to like this video if you haven't already, as it really does help out the channel a lot, and subscribe with notifications on for more money-related videos like this one every single week. And if you want to further support this channel, you can check out some of the links I've left in the description below, which includes a 30-day free trial of Audible and two free audiobooks of your choice, as well as a list of some books on money I'd recommend checking out with your free trial. So as we covered in a previous video on the three types of millionaires, when it comes to building wealth, there are three main paths you can choose to take. You either optimize your expenses, find ways to make your money make more money for you, or simply make more money. When you get right down to it, that's really all there is. So with that in mind, I'm going to be going through what I would do when investing my first $1,000 if I were to take each of these three paths. I'll start with the optimization path, as it's the one I actually have primarily taken in real life. So we optimizers are pretty good at stretching our dollars out as far as humanly possible, living what are often referred to as luxuriously frugal lives because of our abilities to do things that many people would consider extravagant, even though we aren't spending obscene amounts of money. There are a few reasons why we're able to accomplish this. First, we know ourselves pretty darn well. Therefore, we rarely get confused between what is a need for us and what is merely a want. As such, we're often far less prone to carrying debt or wasting what money we do have than some people using other strategies. And we're often able to meet most of our wants because we have a pretty low burn rate compared to most other people. And we take the time to experiment and find the most financially efficient solutions to our wants as possible. Second, we're often patient and fairly cautious, at least in comparison to our hustler and investor counterparts. We're willing to conduct fairly thorough research before jumping into any major new activity, such as traveling to a place we've never been to before. Therefore, we're often able to find deals that others may not have looked for. And third, we recognize the importance of our other resources like time and the effect that they can have on our spending patterns. Obviously, having things like a flexible schedule is incredibly valuable because it allows us to shift things around and take advantage of any deals that we find during our research. So for optimizers, it always seems to come down to finding out where we are at this moment in time personally and financially. The financial end of it can be figured out through a financial review and setting up a budget. You can use one of the popular budgeting apps like You Need a Budget or Every Dollar, or you can set up one yourself in a spreadsheet in Excel. I won't go into how to do the budget today as it's beyond the scope of this video, but if you're interested in learning how others have approached it, you can check out my budgeting playlist at the link in the description below, as I've already covered most of the techniques fairly thoroughly. You Need a Budget is $84 a year, and Every Dollar Plus, which you'll need to unlock some of the quality of life features like automatic tracking, is about $130, at least at the time of this writing. Both do have a free trial for you to test them out, and for this video we'll assume that you went with Every Dollar, not necessarily because it's any better or worse than YNAB or Excel, I mean, that really comes down to personal preference, but because the subscription comes with the ability to take Financial Peace University, which has helped many an optimizer on their financial journey before. To get to know your money self more personally, I'd recommend starting out with The Five Money Personalities, which is a book by Scott and Bethany Palmer. It goes over the five archetypes that most people fall into naturally when it comes to interacting with money. Generally, there will be one or two that speak to us quite clearly most of the time, though we may fall into the behaviors of the others in certain circumstances. You can probably find it at your local library for free, but if not, or if you do but there's a huge waiting list for it, or one of the other books that I'm going to mention in this video, then you can check out that link in the description below for the Audible free trial. 
If that fails, then for this book at least, you can check out the summary of the book I did a while back on this channel. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if all that fails, the cost of the book is about $5 on Amazon as of this writing. For the sake of this video, I'm going to assume that everything is purchased outright to keep our tallies straight, but obviously you don't have to do it that way. So with every dollar and this book, currently 135 of our $1,000 have been spent. The next thing to do as an optimizer is establish your priorities and where you want your life to go. Obviously the answer, particularly to that last part, will change over time and that's perfectly okay, but we do at least want to have an idea of what we're going to value the most and what direction we want our life to head in for now so that we can consciously make spending decisions that are in line with those desires. And one of the most fundamental reads for any optimizer that happens to outline the importance of this prioritization process really well is Vicki Robbins' classic Your Money or Your Life, available for around $15 as of this writing, which brings our total up to about $150. The next thing you'll want to do is understand your current blind spots, or the things that, if left unchecked, could make it much more difficult, if not impossible, for you to successfully reach your financial and lifestyle goals. For that, I recommend Mind Over Money by Drs. Brad and Ted Klontz, which goes over the 12 money disorders that can threaten our financial health, and what we can do to overcome them. I've done a summary on this book as well, and I'll link that in the description below, but at least at the time of this writing, it's available for around $12, which brings our total up to 162. Playing around with the budgeting apps, or Excel, and checking out these books should give you a good foundation from which to build a well-optimized life. But you certainly could go further. Debt can be one of the biggest wealth killers if not handled properly, and generally speaking, we optimizers prefer to avoid it like the plague. Not only because it raises our burn rate, eating away at our excess cash that could be used for savings or investing, and putting us further away from eventually achieving financial independence, but because it also raises our risk of getting into financial trouble should an emergency arise, such as a sudden job loss or health scare. And when it comes to debt, I recommend checking out Dave Ramsey. There are many people online that feel he's not the best source of financial information out there, but I'm not one of them personally. Sure, I do approach some situations differently than he would suggest sometimes, and sure, there are some other strategies out there that can work just as well, or sometimes even better for some people, such as using the debt avalanche instead of the debt snowball when paying off your loans. It all depends on what works best for you, but those things are often on a personal, case-by-case -case basis. For instance, the way I see it, the whole point of using the debt snowball, debt avalanche, or debt tsunami, or whatever strategy it is you use, is to eventually get yourself completely out of debt. If followed, the avalanche will get you out of debt with less interest paid than the debt snowball, assuming the strategies wouldn't have you paying off your loans in the same order, which does happen sometimes. The key is whether or not the person is going to follow through all the way to the end. Some people will manage better with the more tangible sense of momentum that the debt snowball provides, and you can make the argument that seeing the total balance of your loans going down should be encouragement enough, and it is for some, but that isn't the case for everybody. Again, the key is to know yourself and choose the path, or combination of paths, as some people do, that's most likely to help you reach your ultimate goal. With that being said, Ramsey's book, The Total Money Makeover, provides a step-by-step -step guide to living a debt-free and wealth-filled life, and is available for around $12. His YouTube channel is another great and free resource for additional motivation and ideas. In particular, I recommend checking out the Debt-Free Screams and Turning Points playlists, as they can be great motivators when you're paying off any debts you may have. But with that, we're up to a total of $100. $174. Other resources I would use in the optimizer category is the vast array of blogs, podcasts, and YouTube channels covering frugal living topics. Obviously, we do have some of that here on this channel, but there are others that focus on it as well. The Mr. Money Mustache blog is probably the most well-known, but others like Jacob Lund Fisker's site, Early Retirement Extreme, is another good resource. His book isn't that bad either. The same can be said for the Frugal Woods blog. But for now, that'll just about do it for the optimization side of things. We know where we are, we know where we want to get to, and how to overcome things that otherwise might stop us from getting there. And we have a vast array of resources to tap into both now and in the future. All that's left to do in this area is to experiment and see what works best for us, course correcting along the way if need be. But of course, optimization is not the only viable path. So next, let's talk about income. I'm going to assume that most of us who have $1,000 lying around to start investing probably already have a source of income, so I'll skip over the whole finding a day job part of the topic. We'll mostly focus on finding other sources of income today, which means talking about side hustles. In one of my older videos, I went over three reasons why you need a side hustle. In it, I discussed how having an alternative source of revenue can significantly increase your financial stability, especially in the event of an economic downturn that leads to a job loss. 
as well as how it can supplement you on your journey to financial independence and, most relevant for today's video, its potential to radically change your life for the better. Because if you find a hustle that you're passionate about, something that you don't mind working on in your spare time, even if you ended up never making any money on it, it can seriously improve your ability to keep your expenses optimized, partly because your passion project helps you to de-stress from the day and partly because it also allows you to fill more of your time in an enjoyable manner, which will help you cut down on any boredom-induced impulse purchases you may have otherwise made. However, since we don't have a whole lot of money to throw around on a side hustle at the moment, we're going to have to keep things lean. For that, I recommend checking out the $100 Startup by Chris Gilbo for $15. It discussed many case studies of people building micro-businesses with fairly small startup costs, similar to what we would probably be doing given the constraints we have right now. It's a good book that might help get the wheels turning about what's possible to start right away. Beyond that, I would check out Tim Ferriss' seminal book, The 4-Hour Workweek, which helps to drive home the value of scaling and show what is possible for you down the road with your side hustle. It'll run you another $15. Third, I would recommend Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why, which goes over how different companies communicate their business to their customers and what separates the successful from the unsuccessful. This message is incredibly important to understand before you get too far into your business's development. Because with so many moving parts, it can become a lot more difficult to tease out what the company stands for internally, and express it externally for your customers. As the saying goes, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. It'll cost you around $9. And finally, I'd recommend looking into Gary Vanderchuk's work. He's got a YouTube channel, which is a great place to start, and if you do like the message, then his books Crush It, Crushing It, and Jab 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 Right Hook are all good reads, especially if your side hustle is going to have a social media aspect to it. All told, Gary V's books will run you about $43, so our running total is up to around $256, plus whatever a side hustle may cost you to start up. The last category is our investments, however by this point we're in a pretty fortunate position. We've been learning how to optimize our expenses without sacrificing our lifestyle, and we're working on a side hustle we're passionate about that'll hopefully generate some sort of an income for us for a long time to come. Given that combination of circumstances, we really don't need to do anything too crazy when it comes to our investments. Sure, triple-digit returns would be nice, but we don't need to take on that much risk to end up with more than enough. Therefore, most of the things I would recommend starting with when it comes to investments is simply learning about how the markets work and why self-restraint is important. So beyond the dozens of videos on this channel that cover those kind of topics, I'd recommend checking out A Random Walk Down Wall Street by Burton Malkiel. It'll run you about $12, but it does do a nice job illustrating the unpredictability of the markets and why timing them is pretty darn difficult to do for the average investor, especially over the long haul. The Behavior Gap by Carl Richards is $16 and is another nice read that explains why most investors fail to match the returns of the investments that they put their money in over time. Again, driving home the importance of keeping things simple for yourself and not falling victim to the excessive greed or fear during market run-ups or downturns, especially since you've put yourself in a position where you have very little to actually gain from it. At least very little meaningful things to gain from it. Again, having a hundred million dollars would be great, but you don't need that kind of money to live your best life thanks to the lessons you've already been learning. However, if investing is a passion of yours and not merely a means of growing your wealth, then something like Benjamin Graham's $18 book, The Intelligent Investor, is another solid place to start learning the fundamentals of a more active investing strategy. So that brings our running total up to about $302, plus whatever startup costs there are associated with your side hustle. So where else should we put our money? Well, my answer is threefold. First, this gap allows you to experiment with a few different side hustles in case the first one doesn't work out the way you'd hoped. Second, it keeps some cash on hand to take advantage of deals. This could come in the form of something like continuing your Audible membership if you can't get the books quickly from your local library, since that might be the cheaper option than a few of the books on this list. Or it could be by utilizing additional resources like any online courses that you come across, or the expertise of financial or tax professionals, or even something like an entrepreneurship group that you may come across during the time that you're reading these books and blogs or listening to the podcasts and YouTube videos. And third, it leaves some cash on hand to continue your financial education down the road. These books, blogs, podcasts, and video ideas are all fantastic starting points, but they aren't the end. And having some cash set aside for your continuing financial education could very well be the best investment you'll ever make. But that'll do it for me today. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button if you haven't already, subscribe, and hit that bell next to my name so you'll be notified of all my future uploads. I generally upload every single Monday, and if you have a friend that would be interested in this kind of content, be sure to share it with them. Let's really get this information out there and start our own financial revolution.